How's that Commodore 64 working out for you? The pace of technology changes very fast. Last year's problems are resolved this year and will get even better in two years. Apparently though, this is news to many electric vehicle critics who choose to use old data to promote their own anti-EV agenda with superficially scientific claims. And we've kind of had enough of it. So we decided to go pull out some numbers. A few days ago, a friend of mine sent me this sciencey looking video, which claims that electric vehicles are really terrible for the environment. The problem with this slick graphic analysis is that it's simply inaccurate. Let's listen to a couple of parts and we're going to pull it apart step by step. Regular cars run on gasoline, a fossil fuel that pumps CO2 straight out of the tailpipe and into the atmosphere. Electric cars run on electricity. They don't burn any gasoline at all. Let's take a closer look. First, there's the energy needed to produce the car. More than a third of the lifetime carbon dioxide emissions from an electric car comes from the energy used to make the car itself, especially the battery. The mining of lithium, for instance, is not a green activity. When an electric car rolls off the production line, it's already been responsible for more than 25,000 pounds of carbon dioxide emissions. The amount for making a conventional car, just 16,000 pounds. These types of videos are very misleading because they're using old numbers that the authors surely know are inaccurate today. That's like comparing that old Commodore 64, awesome as it was, to a brand new 10th generation Intel i7 based system. It's just silly. Like computers, the technology is developing very quickly. Those of you who've read Partisan Issues regularly know that we're not EV zealots. We point out lots of problems with EVs. However, the arguments in this video and many other anti-EV videos are just maliciously and intentionally wrong. Let's get through it and go through these claims one by one. The biggest, most egregious mistake in this video is the claim that electric cars are just coal powered cars. Because while it's true that electric cars don't run on gasoline, they do run on electricity, which in the US is often produced by another fossil fuel, coal. As green venture capitalist Vinod Kosla likes to point out, electric cars are coal powered cars. Yes, again, in the early 2000s, probably not so far from accurate. Uh, but by 2020, it's just a simple fiction propagated by those with an agenda. There are just so many things wrong with this statement, it's difficult to organize them. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get them just down to two critical points. Point one, nearly every country in the world has massively increased and is increasing their use of primarily natural gas but they're also expanding solar and wind. That includes US, Canada, France, UK, Germany, and certainly China. China is very much pushing their green technologies. Uh, now you say, well, natural gas isn't green. No, it's only about twice as good as coal. It's not perfect, but it's, a, it's certainly much better than coal. Okay, so let's take a look at US uh, generation. So as you can see here, the blue line at the top is coal. Hmm. Seems like it's been in a bit of a slump since 2009. We have an article on how uh, double the number of mines have closed under President Trump than have closed under Obama. Uh, so it's not even a political thing. It's just the fact that natural gas has been incredibly cheap and incredibly stable forever. So we're not changing away from coal because of the environment, although we could. We're changing away from coal because gas is better, as you can see in the green line here. Renewables are also increasing at a pretty heavy pace and oil is just falling off. So let's take a look at new electricity that's coming on this year, which is 2020. So you could probably apply the same numbers to 2021, you know, roughly. And you can see here that what's coming online? Yeah, solar, wind, natural gas. So the trend is continuing. Nobody's opening up any coal plants in the US or Canada. And I'm not aware of any in most of Europe including the newly freed up United Kingdom. Although there may be some, so don't hold me to that if I'm wrong, but I don't believe there's any. And as you can see here, a lot of US states have passed a green mandate or have a target to get to 100% clean energy, uh, mostly by the year 2050. So this isn't some fiction, some temporary trend. The simple fact is, 
that coal isn't is not going away because of regulation it's mostly going away because renewables and natural gas technologies are substantially cheaper than coal let's get on to point number two in my case i get my electricity from the calgary power grid which is 86 percent natural gas and 40 percent wind powered and it has been since 2016 you think calgary alberta isn't that oil sands country yep and we get our our electricity from wind and natural gas that's right now here's the kicker the other source of electricity that, that i get is from my solar panels now you think well solar panels well good for you but not everybody has solar panels yeah but an awful lot of ev owners do look at these charts you can see that a third of ev owners either have solar panels or are getting solar panels and considering that you charge your ev mostly at home guess where most of that electricity is coming from hmm it's not even coming from the grid it's coming mostly from their solar panels just like mine so the claim that electric cars are just coal powered cars is just a silly fiction propagated by those with an agenda or those that are just clamoring for clicks on youtube let's look at another frequent claim that's also wrong producing electric car batteries creates 55 percent more emissions than co2 powered cars specifically this is the manufacturing of them largely based on the batteries so that was the case back in the year 2000 perhaps maybe even 2005 but again technology advances relentlessly in 2020 the manufacture of a regular gas powered car makes out only about 6500 pounds of co2 while an ev makes about 9000 not great but both gas powered and electric vehicles are greener and getting so much better as we advance our technologies so the numbers presented here are just fiction again let's go on lithium mining is horrible yep lithium mining has been a messy business so is producing oil but just like oil which has gotten much better in recent years so is lithium so lithium in the past has mostly been produced by burning rock yep burning rock and to do that it takes vast amounts of fossil fuels another way to produce lithium which is the way chile and some other places do but mostly chile is by destroying water tables and evaporating enormous amounts of water from large flat ponds leaving the lithium to be readily captured however like all technologies in a free market there's an enormous regulatory and competitive pressure to improve efficiency today new hard rock mining mines like frontier lithium's Sudbury, ontario canada mine operates more efficiently than any previous geothermal lithium aka green lithium is produced naturally and has become economic now we have a whole separate page on how lithium's mined and how yes it's still terrible but it's getting so much better okay let's move on in addition to his numbers being just flat out wrong even his underlying assumptions are wrong and as such he draws silly conclusions like this one so throughout the full life of an electric car it will emit just three to five tons less co2 built into nearly all of the criticisms of evs is the assumption that evs have the same lifespan as gas-powered vehicles the second assumption that's built into almost all of these criticisms is that ev batteries become garbage and a burden on society when their batteries get old both of these assumptions are just fundamentally wrong because evs have 30 percent fewer parts and wildly simplified powertrain you know just a battery electric motors and tires some control systems there's very little to break on them so they will last much longer than traditional uh, internal combustion or ice vehicles we have not had evs in this world long enough to know exactly how long they're going to last to make a definitive statement but most estimates are between 50 and 100 percent longer than traditional cars when an ev battery won't charge to more than about 70 percent of its capacity due to age it is replaced by the manufacturer however ford gm tesla mercedes and all of the other oems aren't stupid they're not going to take those batteries out and throw them in the landfill think about it they're going to use those ev batteries for other purposes they are an asset a valuable asset ev batteries are so reliable that there have been precious few of them to be repurposed in the past so we don't know all of the actual uses for them but we have some pretty good ideas when the chevy volt was released 
Chevrolet, well, General Motors in particular, said that they're planning to repackage their batteries and sell them for wall units, for people's homes. They're not going to the landfill. So when there is a supply of used EV batteries, which won't be for a few years yet, they will be used for home storage. They will be used for utility scale storage and they will be used for data center backups, you know, electricity backups instead of diesel generators, especially for short term. And even if those repurpose batteries then fail in the future, they are not going to end up in landfills. Those batteries are full of valuable materials and they are going to be harvested and turned into new batteries. To put a cap on this topic, here is a solid modern analysis of real cars showing that 2020 EVs are carbon competitive with gas powered vehicles in just two years. By the 10th year of life, a gas car will produce about 70% more GHDs than an EV. EVs could last 20 years on the road rather than the standard 10 or 12. And then their batteries will be repurposed and then they will be harvested, all of which are saving GHDs. And then there's the whole giant list of things that just better about EVs. So how much CO2 gas stations and tanker trucks use that are filling up those gas stations create? How the total cost of ownership over a, even a five year period of an EV is actually substantially less expensive than a gas powered vehicle. You ever notice that you're only short of gasoline when you're in a hurry? Well, almost everybody that has an EV charges at home and always has their vehicle full. So that just doesn't happen. Another cool thing, most EVs have all a next generation cool tech in them. You don't have to schedule, line up and wait and pay for oil changes. The list goes on and on and on from this crazy acceleration that you get in an EV to virtually no maintenance on them to getting rid of idling pollution. There's just so much here. The bottom line is that electric vehicles are just better, cheaper technology, total cost of ownership there which just so happens to be great for the planet too. That is why we're all going to end up driving electric vehicles within the next, oh, say 15 or so years. It's not that people are requiring us to, it's that they're just better vehicles. If you like this topic, we'd really appreciate it if you'd click like below. We talk about a lot of EV issues. We talk about a lot of energy issues. We talk about China. If you like this kind of stuff, please subscribe. If you have any questions or concerns, please put a comment below or get a hold of us at www.partisanissues.com. Thanks and have a great day. Bye bye.